In this review, I will be taking a look at the Ultimate Flasher Gremlin by NECA. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's take a look at the packaging. The figure comes in a deluxe 5 panel window box packaging, similar to all of NECA's other Ultimate figures. There is a beautiful illustration of the flasher on the front. Here's the top of the box. And here's the side of the box. Turning around to the back, there are images of different gremlins you can recreate using the included accessories. At the top is a little read-up. Opening the box, there is a huge image of the flasher gremlin on the inside panel. And here's the figure and accessories inside the package. Let's take a closer look at the flasher gremlin. The gremlin figure itself utilizes the same sculpt as previous NECA gremlin figures, such as the ultimate gremlin and ultimate stripe. The Flasher's trench coat is made of a soft goods fabric material. It is actually very nicely made. The inside of the trench coat is like a silk material. On the outside, there are buttons sewn on each side, and there's even a belt. If you choose to do so, you can tie the belt to keep the coat closed. The coat does not hinder the arm articulation. Now I must talk about my biggest gripe with the coat and that's the difficulty of getting the gremlin to hold it open. He is called a flasher for a reason. The gremlin has to be able to pull that pose off. While it is possible, it is very difficult to do so. Pretty much you have to fit the coat between the fingers just right. And even then, with the slightest movement, it will come out. I want to go on and get this comparison out of the way. This is an ultimate gremlin that I have put the Gremlin 2 Flasher's coat on. The coat is a sculpted plastic. Some of you may disagree with me, but I think this looks way better than the soft goods coat. The coat is sculpted open so the Flasher will always be in his iconic pose. But that is my opinion. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think looks better. Removing the coat is fairly simple to do. First you pop the hands off, and then pull the arms back, and finally pull the coat off. Here's a better look at the jacket off the figure. With the coat removed, let's take a closer look at the figure itself. The figure looks like it came right out of the film. The sculpting work and paint are amazing. All the little spikes on his head are painted. The ears. Even the inside of the mouth is painted and sculpted nicely. Moving down to the torso, the design on the chest. The stripes on his hands and arms are painted. And moving down to the legs, the thighs are painted and even the feet. Turning around to the back side, they did not skimp out on the paint either. The back, and even the back side of the ears have painted designs on them. This is just one amazing figure. Moving on to the articulation, the jaw is articulated, so it can open and close. The ears can rotate and hinge backwards. The head is on a ball joint so it can rotate and move up and down. The neck is able to move around. The arms can move up and down. The elbows can move in and out. The hands can rotate and while there is a hinge at the wrist, mine is too stiff to move and it feels like it's going to break when I try. He has a torso joint that allows movement forward and backwards, as well as rotates side to side. The thighs are more stiff, but they can move slightly and rotate. 
The knees can bend forward and back. And finally, the feet can move and rotate. Here are the sunglasses. They are black with tin and see-through plastic for the lenses. They pop right onto his head with ease. What's great about the Ultimate Flasher Gremlin is that it comes with accessories to recreate other gremlins from the bar. Here are two based off the clip I just played. Up first is the mallet. It is sculpted and painted beautifully, with all the little cracks in the wood. Here is the alternate right hand that is capable of holding the mallet. It is more of a closed fisted hand. When using this hand, getting the figure to hold the mallet is no problem at all. It just slides right into it. Up next is the fedora. Once again, it is sculpted and painted very nicely. It looks like actual brown leather. On the underside, there are indentions where the hat can fit snugly onto the figure's head. And here he is with the hat and mallet together. The next accessory is the hand puppet. The puppet is that of a bee. The sculpting of the fabric is very well done, and the paint is clean. In order to put the puppet on, you must first pop off either hand. The puppet has a hole that pegs right into the arm. It looks great once attached. Here is the hoping they make the lobster puppet eventually to properly recreate that scene. Next up are the accessories to make the poker player gremlin. First up is the poker visor. The visor is red in color with a black strap. It is a little warped out of the package, but it is made of a gummy plastic. To get the figure to properly wear the visor, you must put the strap under the chin and pull up over the face. It is a little difficult, but the gummy plastic will stretch, and once it is on, it's a snug fit. Next is the playing cards. There are several cards sculpted together that look like real playing cards. Getting the figure to hold onto them is a little tricky though. Pretty much, you just have to position them just right to get them to stay. Next is the pile of poker chips. It is all one sculpted piece and has red, white, and blue poker chips on top of playing cards. There is even a couple pieces of popcorn in the pile. The underside is not painted. This pile of chips is mainly just a cool display piece that can be placed next to the figure. Here is the poker gremlin all assembled. And here he is next to the original poker player gremlin released way back in 2003. It just blows my mind how far figures have come since then. For fun, let's take a look at the new figure with the old figure's accessories. The next accessory is the bow tie. It is solid black in color. Like the poker hat, it is made of a gummy plastic as well. In order to put the bow on, you must first pop off the head, then slide it over the neck, and pop the head back on. Due to the dark skin tone of the gremlin, it is kind of hard to notice the bow tie. The next gremlin you can recreate is the drunk gremlin from the bar. The first accessory to do this would be the cigarette. It looks like a real cigarette even with the sculpted and painted ash. The figure does come with four of them, which is good because as tiny as they are, they could be very easily lost. Due to the articulated jaw, the cigarette can be held in his mouth by pressing up on the jaw to keep the cigarette in place. For a comparison, here is the cigarette next to the cigarette that came with the Gremlins 2 Flasher Gremlin. I personally like the old one way more. The next accessory is the beer mug. 
It is made of a clear plastic to resemble an actual glass. The beer itself is a separate sculpted piece that can be removed so that you can just have an empty glass. Getting the figure to hold it is fairly easy. With the close gripped right hand, he can hold the handle. And with the open gripped left hand, he can hold the actual glass. Now let's compare the Ultimate Flasher to some other figures. First up is the Gremlins 2 Flasher. Next is an Ultimate Gizmo. And for fun, here's Flasher next to an original 1984 LJN large stripe figure. And that is my review of the NECA Ultimate Flasher Gremlin. This figure comes with my highest recommendation for any Gremlins fan. Once again, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Hit that like button if you did enjoy this video. And follow me on social media, links are in the description below. And sharing this video is much appreciated. Thanks for watching.